everyone. Welcome to Stampin' Up! with Jamie. Thank you for joining me tonight uh, live or watching the replay. I really appreciate uh, you coming on in and checking out what I have to share with you today. I hope everyone's doing well and um, enjoying the spring, if you want to call it spring, at least here in upstate New York. It's not too, too warm today. And tomorrow we're supposed to get snow, which is insane. So as you come on in, introduce yourself. Let me know where you're watching from. Uh, my name is Jamie, and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in upstate New York. Hi, Heather, and Michelle's watching. Karen's here. Hi, everyone. I'm a little high today. <laughs> um, hi, Lori. Come on in. Thanks, everyone, for joining me tonight. How is everyone tonight? The last day of March. That is crazy. I don't know about you, but I just felt like March flew by so, so fast. Come on in. Um, I want to talk to you about a couple of things. I want to switch you around and we're going to get started on tonight's project. I have to say tonight's project kind of evolved. And um, as we make it, I'll tell you, this is what it's going to look like. Where There we are. It's backwards, I think, for you guys. Um, but that's not my original uh, plan. It kind of evolved um, as I was making it and preparing it. So that's fun. I can share you kind of my thought process behind that. But last day of March, meaning what? It means today is your last chance to get the free upgraded spiral bound annual catalog tomorrow. I order them. So exciting. I am so excited. I got to see the uh, new annual catalog PDF in all of its beauty and it is pretty good guys i don't know it's pretty good you're gonna really like it um, my wish list is long tomorrow i get to place a pre-order of not everything but we have a list we can choose from and a lot of um it i will be ordering so that's really exciting i plan on doing an unboxing a reveal so to speak um, of this brand new product as soon as I get it in. I'm thinking I'll probably be getting it Monday, so maybe Monday afternoon. So be on the lookout. I'll obviously let you know uh, before I go live and give you a little bit of a heads up, but I will be doing that and sharing with you our new in colors and some of the new bundles and sweets and just gorgeousness, if that's a word. Um, if you are ever considered joining and being a demonstrator now would be a great time because in your starter kit you can put you can um order from the pre-order list that we get to order from so um if you are interested in getting a 20 percent off your all orders and being able to preview catalogs early order from them early now is a great time because you're gonna want so much from this new catalog you're gonna want that that 20 percent discount for sure um and i'd be happy and i would love to chat with you more about that so um kim's here hi everyone Tomorrow's April 1st, April Fool's Day. Do you guys play April Fool's jokes? I have to say, um, I don't. <laughs> I don't, and I don't plan on it tomorrow, so I don't know if my kids got that memo, but I am not planning on doing any April Fool's jokes. I just want a nice day before we hit, um, well, it's a really long weekend for us because next week is spring break, so lots of fun things. Hey, Linda, you're planning your order for tomorrow. I know. I, I I got mine ready, so I'm good. I'm ready. Let's do this. I'm so excited. I can't get here fast enough. I'm ready to play with new stuff. So, um, oh, it was your mom's birthday. Aw. <laughs> um, I'm going to flip you around. Um, if you get uh, seasick or you tend to get dizzy or whatever, just kind of look away for a second. I'm going to put my finger over the camera. Um, so hopefully you don't get dizzy, but just bear with me here a little. I'm going to um, flip us around. If you have any questions, uh, let us know. The joke is the snow, yes, that is true, Kim. We are getting snow supposedly tomorrow, although I don't think it's a lot. I think it's just sort of a dusting, I hope. I mean, I'm a, I'm a snow-loving person, but not on April 1st, <laughs> by no means. I'm ready for, for green, green grass. Okay, guys, let me flip you around here, and then we'll get going. Oh, oh my goodness, I tightened that so tight. Um, Let me flip you around, give me a second. Always takes sort of some finagling. <laughs> and then I have to move it around. Okay, give me a second. I'm gonna, whoops, I'm gonna flip you, and then I'm gonna move you. There we go. Okay. I know, snow, Karen, can you believe it? I think just about a dusting. I think less than an inch is what they're saying, but still, snow. Who wants it? Nobody does. <laughs> That's the truth right there. Okay, so here's tonight's card. 
I saw this sort of offset um, panel. That's what I'm gonna call this back here uh, in a card from the new annual catalog. I was really inspired by it. If I remember correctly, I don't even remember what card it was. I just kind of saw it and it kind of stuck in my brain. These panels were embossed. So they embossed it and they chopped it up. Well, I decided to switch it up a little bit. And so I stamped the background, cut it into the panels. Then I added this really fun uh, ribbon weaving through. I'm going to show you how I did that. And then a couple of little vellum details and some pearls and then a little textured background. This, folks, is like my ideal card <laughs> right here. It has stamping, it has embossed texture, it has ribbons, it has some hint of a die cut, and then a little details that are kind of peeking out from behind. So I am really happy to share tonight's card. If you joined and caught my Tuesday afternoon YouTube live, you will recognize these colors because it's what I used for my card on Tuesday. Um, it wasn't my original plan. My original plan was to do another green um, and have it be in a color challenge, but I just wasn't liking it. And so I scratched that and I went with these colors. Here's the thing, folks. I do color challenges and sketch challenges all the time. But if it's compromising the overall look of your card, it's not worth it. So I scratched the sketch, the color challenge. I won't be able to participate in anymore. Um, and I went with the same colors that I did on Tuesday, honestly, because I really like them. So uh, who knows? Maybe all next week I'll use the same colors. I don't know. <laughs> I really like these colors together. I think they're very springy. So let's just dive in and get going. My card here is starting off with Pool Party. It is five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four, to, four and a quarter down the middle. Look at this, folks. I have my bone folder. I'm telling you, having a second bone folder has made an incredible difference. If you caught any of my previous lives, you'll see that I'm always losing my bone folder and can never find it. Hey, Mom. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Um, you totally agree with the color challenges. Yeah, Michelle, I find that sometimes it's like I start off with an idea and then I'm like, no, I just don't like it together and I'm going to do my own thing. So, I mean, it still serves as sort of a jumping start, um, to card making, but, um, I don't necessarily always stick with it. So my panel here, I just adhered it on without even saying what I was doing because <laughs> I just want to chat with you all tonight, honestly. Um, four and a quarter by five and a half. This is another panel of Pool Party. Now that my subtle embossing folder is retired or retiring, I should say, um, this puppy is going to get even more use. It was probably my second favorite embossing folder, so... Tasteful textile embossing folder. Although I have to say, in the new annual catalog, Stampin' Up! hit it out of the park with their designer series paper, gorgeous, and their embossing folders. I literally want them all. Um, they're so, so good. And I'm glad because a lot of mine retired. <laughs> I'm kind of left with bo bare bones here as far as embossing folders. Okay, so that is on. I'm just raising my volume. Okay, there we go. Okay, next, I'm going to kind of work backwards because I already have this um, kind of, uh, what do I want to call that frame, um, on a block. So I'm going to take a panel of basic white to create this, my, uh, card front sentiment here. And the frame comes from the floating and fluttering stamp set. I really like, it's a bundle and I'm going to be using the, the coordinating dies. This frame here is really fun. Anytime we get, you know, a different kind of frame, I'm all about it. I love it. I love frames especially ones that have like little details and that you can stamp and it's not just a die, but you stamp and then cut it out. Yes, please. Okay. So stamping the first, I'm actually going to stamp the sentiment. I'm going to tell you why the sentiment comes from the simply succulents, um, stamp set. So first of all, the floating and fluttering is just images. There's no sentiments. So you're going to have to pull your sentiments in from somewhere else. And I really like this one up here. You make the ordinary extraordinary. And this is a cling stamp, which means to get perfect placement is a little bit more of a challenge. And because the frame is photopolymer, I'm going to start with my cling because I'll be able to work my frame around my, uh, my um, around this one a lot easier. Hold on. I'm going to do it on this side. Stamp that down. Beautiful. That was Bumblebee, if I didn't say, by the way. What just got all over my, where did that come from? 
Is it on the back? No. I have no idea where that came from. Hold on, let me just see. Let me get a scrap piece and hopefully, I just wanna make sure it's not, okay, it's, not, it's dry. I don't know where that came from. Okay, so that's our sentiment. The frame, again, from the floating and fluttering, I'm gonna stamp it also in Bumblebee. I don't know why I closed it. I needed to keep it open. Um, and see how it's photopolymer? I can look right through and get good placement, so that's why I'm doing this one second. And I'm going to, going to aim for center. Now, if I can't get this right, we're just gonna do it again, honestly. Uh, is that straight? I think that's straight. Oh my goodness, I can't get it. There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna say that's good. We're gonna call that good and done. Okay. Now, I have a bunch of dies out here. We're gonna be using a bunch. The floating and fluttering dies coordinates with the floating and fluttering stamp set. Oh my goodness, that's such a tongue twister, all of that. And it comes with really great dies. We have a standalone butterfly. The stamp cuts out sort of the cluster of butterflies and a couple of the individual images. And then we have this frame one here, which obviously coordinates with the frame that we just stamped. And off camera here, I'm going to hopefully line it up well and cut it out. If it doesn't go as planned, we're just gonna do it again. Okay, beautiful. I love when it works, okay? That's what we're left with. Now, you're gonna notice in my card here that I wound the ribbon through it. Well, how did I do that? <laughs> I'm using another die. This one is the Hippo and Friends dies. You love the yellow, Lindsay? <laughs> I don't love yellow. I really, really don't. But Bumblebee, I don't mind. It's probably my my least repulsive <laughs> yellow. Um, it's more like a it's like a light mustard. I want to call it. So I can handle it. Normally, I'm like, ugh, yellow, get it away. So in the what is this called? Hippo and Friends dies, which has its own stamp set that it coordinates with. By the way, though, if you don't have this, you should because these layering dies are amazing. Um, it does come with two of these, and this is what we're going to use to get that ribbon to weave in and out. Now, I will tell you ahead of time that ideally I would do it on the back, least repulsive. That's how I feel about yellow, Joanna. It's the truth. I really feel like, oh, it's yellow. Um, normally I would do my dye on the back. I would just line it up, run it through and be done because it makes a little bit of an impression when you run it through. But because I have to kind of make sure I don't get too close to my stamped frame and um, I don't want to hit the words, I have to do it on the front. So it's going to make a little bit of an impression. We're all just going to breathe and it's going to be okay. <laughs> Talking to myself here. Um, but, and then we're just going to, I can flatten it out a little bit, just even with um, my finger or the bone folder. So you get two of these, which is nice because you can use them together, but I'm not brave enough to use them together. So I'm going to do it one at a time. So see how it makes just a little impression there, but it's very faint. It's not enough to make me think I'm not, I don't want to use it because I like the idea of weaving a, the ribbon in. I think it adds a really nice detail. Okay, side number two. That's really bothering. Where is all this coming from? I wonder. I have no idea. Is it on the back? No. I don't know where all the splotches are coming from. Is it on the back of my card? No, I don't know. You love yellow, Tammy? <gasps> Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. You love yellow. Well, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> That's how you feel about purple. I'm not a huge fan of purple either, honestly. So to get that um, kind of marking out, I'm just gonna use the tip of my bone folder and it does kind of smooth it out a little bit. It's barely noticeable. I'm honestly like, I just notice it because I'm crazy, but I see it. So just smooth it out with like your bone folder, even like the back of your fingernail will work a little bit. Okay. We're going to set this aside. Now that that's done, I am going to, oh boy, hold on. I got to clean my frame, pull it off my block and then switch, pull this off and put the big um, butterfly one on instead. Boom. 
So the free, the butterflies again from the floating and fluttering, I'm literally using, how many am I using? I'm using two stamp sets and three different dies and an embossing folder, ribbon and embellishments in three colors. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. Okay, so here's my, my cluster of butterflies. So pretty. And I have a panel of, what is this? Pear Pizzazz. Pear Pizzazz cardstock. This measures three and a quarter by four and a half. And I'm going to stamp it same color over same color. So Pear Pizzazz cardstock, Pear Pizzazz ink. And the nice thing about these butterflies is it's not a square. Meaning that when I stamp them, I'm literally going to stamp this whole background. I can kind of work it, you know, to work, to fit into each other, I guess is how I want to say that. So I'm going to just ink this up. This is, we're going to have to do this a couple of times. So I'm literally, let's see here, we're just going to pick a corner. We'll start here. There's no really rhyme or reason to where you start stamping. Just pick somewhere and then we're going to kind of make everything work around it. Okay, there's one. Creating my own backgrounds, I think, is one of the things I love doing the most. And I don't do it a ton, but I do enjoy it. So this one I'm going to flip. Oh, I don't want them going in the same direction. Okay, maybe I'll, hold on. Maybe I'll do this one first. Can I get it like that? Oh, I think I can get it like that. Stamp that down. You don't have to worry about getting every little spot covered because A, we're going to cut it up, and B, most of the middle is going to be covered. So if anything, just kind of worry about the, the outside pieces. Um, this one, maybe we'll do it like this. Oh, that fits nicely there. It's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. You just kind of have to see how they all fit together. Beautiful. Actually, this is coming together better. This one is coming together better than my sample. And then I flipped it around, and then now we'll do it like there. Like so, and there we have the background. You could do a lot with this. You could keep it as a solid panel, just like that. Mat it, put it on a card, beautiful, done. You could um, do a whole background of this. You could then cut it out if you wanted to use the dies and cut the different butterflies and elements out. Um, but we are actually going to chop this up. <laughs> hey, Julie, how are you doing tonight? I just got to get my cutter out here. I forgot I needed it. Hopefully I remember the measurements. Oh boy. I forgot. Four. Okay. So two and a quarter. So first I'm going to go two and a quarter. That will cut it in two. Like that. And then I'm going to hit one and one eighth. Is that right? Yes. One and one eighth will cut it again perfectly in half. So first two and a quarter then one and one eighth, and you will have perfect sized panels. And I kind of want to, again, they're gonna get offset, so you know, might not notice, but I kind of want to keep them in the same order that they are. Okay. Next, we're gonna take a card front, and we're just going to arrange them on the card. I originally had the idea to <laughs> adhere them down with Stampin' Dimensionals. That's even trickier because then you're working with depth and it's kind of hard to gauge if they're lined up. Um, the other thing you could do is totally just make these a little wonky and a little overlappy. <laughs> you know, wonky, overlappy, like that. And then put your same thing over the front and call it a day and it's just fine. That way you're not having to worry to kind of line them up as, as evenly. Um, the pressure is kind of off, but... I like a challenge. I like a challenge. So I'm more than anything going to focus on spacing in between them first, not so much um, height and whatnot, because I'm going to deal with that in a second. I am not measuring. I'm not using a tape. I'm going to eyeball this and it's going to be okay. Okay, that looks about right. Now, I'm going to use my grid paper kind of as a, as a guide to stamping my panels down. I use my grid paper a lot. It, it serves as a, as a scrap paper to stamp on, obviously, but it's also a huge tool when measuring. Like if I, anytime I'm measuring, I use my grid paper. Um, and it's also great when I'm trying to see things um, level. So what I'm gonna do, bump my card right up to one of the lines. Okay, did that shift a little bit or is it, that looks awfully close. We're gonna move that a little bit. 
and I'm going to put adhesive first on my first panel here. Come on, come on, don't give me trouble. And then I'm going to go up one quarter. So these are each quarter marks, these little boxes. They're each a quarter squared. And I'm going, so my card's on this one. Hold on, can I get a pen? Maybe a pen would help. I have a pencil. So my card is on this one, right? I'm gonna kind of eyeball this one for my panel. Is that, okay, Phew. I thought maybe I flipped it over. So I'm, I'm not using a ruler. If you wanted to really, really make sure that they were straight and whatnot, you could use a ruler. I'm not going to. So one panel, two panels. I'm gonna do the same thing. This one's a little harder because it's more in the middle but I'm going to sort of imagine a line running across. And then I also wanna make sure I'm sort of evenly spaced. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip my card around, butt my card right up to the same line that it was, and I'm gonna do the other panel. Again, it's not foolproof. It's not gonna get you perfectly spaced. If you want perfectly spaced, get out a ruler or something like that. But I think this does a good enough job. It's pretty close to getting them well spaced. Okay, there's one and one more to go. A little adhesive, a little adhesive, a lot of adhesive. There's two kinds of crafters in the world. The one that put on a ton of <laughs> adhesive and the ones that do it scarcely. I don't tend to put a ton on, especially with the new stamp and seal. It's pretty powerful. Okay, and there we go. Those are our four panels. Now, again, perfect, probably not, but uh, close enough. That's what we're gonna call it. <laughs> and honestly, these are just a detail because all this other beautifulness is like what people are looking at, not necessarily the butterfly stamped background. Okay, so here's our sentiment. Ahead of time, I used the, where are they? Here they are. I'm telling you, I'm using three different dyes. The sunflower dyes, very well loved. And I'm using these guys here. I think they're supposed to be like wheat or something. I don't know. I'm using them as just like a nice little detail background. <laughs> I don't know if they're wheat. And I'm gonna put a little adhesive on my top. And there's two. There's one that has, I mean, cut them out of vellum. There's one that has two. And then there's one that has one, I'm gonna kind of, I don't know, sort of put, the, I'm not overthinking this. And they're gonna kind of, the thing about vellum is when you cut it out, see how they curl, which I kind of like because it stays sort of 3D. I'm just gonna do that. Hopefully it doesn't go off now. And then I'm gonna do the same, I knew that was gonna happen, come on. There we go. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I cut two of the two and two of the single and Oops, 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 oops. Don't you be doing that. And then, ooh, one is a lot more adhered on. Hold on, let me fix this one. Hopefully I can pull this off without completely, ooh, well, I ripped two of them, but I don't think that really matters. No, we're good, okay. Okay, so it's coming together. I like the vellum. Vellum is really nice when you're wanting to add just a little detail, um, but not necessarily have it be a main component of the design. It just kind of, you see it, but it's not like in your face. I really, really like it. Okay, so let me move this. Oh wait, there it is. Cause I just realized I don't, <laughs> don't remember where the ribbon comes from. Hold on, let me look it up quickly. You know, I just don't know these things off the top of my head and I've probably used this ribbon a bajillion times. Okay, the ribbon comes from, where is, oh, there it is, number 22, Forever Greenery Trim Combo Pack. This is one of the beautiful things that you get. It's really soft. It's just a really soft and pretty ribbon. It's just light and it's got nice texture to it. It's really pretty. And what I'm going to do, oops, I totally unwound that way too much, is go in this cutout. Okay, I was just trying to see if my dies were gonna get in the way, but they're not. And then up this one, so that our ribbon is kind of going behind the detail here. Now that is way more than I need, but I'd rather have too much, honestly. I'm going to adhere this down with Stampin' Dimensionals, which of course I forgot to grab, hold on. We're gonna put four, I think should do it. 
one and two. And here's the nice thing about that dimensional is it's going to help hold those, those vellum pieces down. It's acting as tape and adhesive, which is nice. Now, our my ribbon, because I didn't adhere it down, um, I'll still kind of have a little bit of wiggle room with it, which is nice when I go to make our knot. Okay, one last one. Come on, come on. There we go. Oops. <laughs> They're flying everywhere. Okay, this is going front and center. I don't usually adhere things like direct center to a card, but I think this warrants it. The ribbon's gonna, whoops, ribbon's gonna go underneath, behind. And then I'm gonna find my scissors and give a little haircut because, again, I'm cutting it way longer than I need. I'll definitely end up giving that much more of a haircut. When I was making the card, I originally did a knot here. I thought, oh, well, that would be kind of fun to do a kind of like, like a tag, you know how you have like a tag, but I did not like the way that looks. So I thought, nope, we're gonna do, we're gonna do a knot much closer to uh, our sentiment. And see how I can have like play that, play with it. I can pull it a little bit. Works well. Okay, so one knot and two knots. And I want them to kind of go out. They're gonna wanna twist. That's okay, twist. There we go, Be beautiful. I love when a beautiful knot happens. And that's why I do knots and not bows. A bow would there would be beautiful, but no, not happening. If you are a bow maker, have at it. <laughs> and knot is what'll do it for me. I don't want my um, tails too long, so I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a haircut here on one side. I should have done the other one, this one first. This one's the harder of the two because well, I guess I should come at it from this angle. Why didn't I do that before? Oh my goodness. In my sample, this was hard to kind of get a, a grip on. Ooh, I totally didn't cut that straight. Hold on, I'm gonna fix this, I think. Either fix it or make it worse. Oh, I'm totally making it worse, hold on. It's gonna be like the Valentine's heart that isn't even and then you just keep chopping it up until there's like nothing left of the heart. Hold on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, that's a little rough looking. <laughs> that is not the best. So I can tie a knot, but I can't cut ribbon apparently. So what I might do is sort of fray the edges and then it'll be less noticeable. <laughs> We're gonna fray it and call it like, maybe they won't notice. I just, it's, I can't get a good grip on it. Get a grip. Is everybody holding their breath as I'm doing this? Cause I kind of am. Come on, I want it to cut. Yeah, that's a little better, except now this one's way too long. Oh my goodness. Okay, after this, it is what it is. I'm not messing with it again. Okay, so it's a lot smaller than maybe I had originally anticipated. I do need a pair of ribbon scissors, Karen. I absolutely do. And you know when I think about this, when I do my product shares and I'm cutting like bajillion rolls of ribbon and I'm cutting and cutting and cutting, although if, if Penny is watching, she did all my ribbon cutting last year. Um, yes, I absolutely need a pair of ribbon scissors. Yep. 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 Note to self. <laughs> um, just to add a little bit of something, something, I have some pearls. And there's three sizes of pearls. We sort of have large, medium, and small, and I'm just gonna stick with the small ones. They're honestly usually the ones I only use. Oop, that one kind of got a little bent, is the small ones. And I'm kind of tucking them under because I want them sort of like peeking out without being like, hey, here I am. I like things like that. I like things that you don't necessarily see, but maybe someone holding the card and is going, oh, there they are. You know what I mean? I don't know. That's That's just what I like. So I'm sticking with it. A couple more. Let's see here. We'll do one there. And another one there. Okay. That's the front. Fairly simple, but it has all the good elements. It has texture. It has stamping. It has ribbon. It has embellishments. It has regular cardstock. It, the only thing it's missing would be some designer series paper. But technically, technically, I kind of made my own designer series paper. So honestly, I'm calling this, it has all the goods right here, folks. And it's fairly simple. I mean, really, um, 
you know, this whole panel, it look, it makes, it makes the design, but it's such an easy element to do. Honestly, anyone can do that. So for the inside of my card, I have a panel of basic white, four and a quarter, um, excuse me, don't do that. Four by five and a quarter is my inside. And I'm just going to stamp the butterflies a couple of times. I'm going to keep it real simple on the inside. No extra sentiment or whatever. People can add their own sentiment or just write a whole lot. And so I'm going to do like one here. Hopefully that came out. It did. And then I'm going to flip it. I think I'm going to go with that sort of side now like that stamp it beautiful 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 I just realized I didn't read oh my gosh I gotta do it again I'm looking at going why does that look green because I didn't clean it first hold on I'm gonna do another one I can't send one of you is gonna earn the card and I just can't with a right mind send that to someone that has a green splotch in it I'm looking at it going, that has a hint of green. And then I realized, oh, is that why everything's yellow? I have ink on my finger. Um, and then I realized I didn't clean that stamp. So it had pear pizzazz on it, which, and I also have ink on my finger. Oh my goodness, people, I'm a hot mess. I'm just gonna ink this up off here. Hopefully, hopefully I didn't get too much green in my ink pad. Okay, I think we're good. I'm going to do it again, though, because I want it to be true bumblebee and not pear pizzazz bumblebee. <laughs> okay, so don't do like that. Clean your clean your stamp first. Don't be like Jamie. <laughs> Thanks, Rosie. I appreciate it. I like it, too. It's very springy. It, they're just, they make me happy. They're happy colors. I like them a lot together. Like I said, I used them Tuesday and I'm using them again. And I don't know, maybe I'll just use them in all my cards next week. I haven't designed them yet, but that's how much I like the color, <laughs> the colors together. Okay, last but not least, adhere it to the inside and we are done. Oops, open it up, measure it up, aim for center. And we're done. Ta-da, isn't that pretty? I think it's really, really sweet. Of course, my vellum got a little squished. There you go. Um, really nice details. I think it's easy enough to be replicated. You can add any number of sentiments in here. It could easily be a birthday card. It could easily be a wedding card. I mean, it could really <laughs> match anything. Oh my goodness, Rosie. I am not Karen. I do not have my nails to match. <laughs> That made me laugh. But uh, so try your hand at the card. Let me know. Um, share your share your designs and your inspiration from this card. Pre-order starts tomorrow, so it's a great time to join as a demonstrator. Let's talk about it. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer any questions um, and get you more information. And catalogs will go out pretty soon for you all. I'm very excited. So thanks, everyone, for joining me tonight. I've had such a blast with you. Um, I will see you back again next week. Bye-bye.